Hello and welcome to episode 52 of the Youth Intake Challenge with Dalit Hamlet. We're into the 17th season and it's Youth Intake Day, the day everybody looks forward to. So we'll have a quick review of how we're getting on so far, what's been going well, what's been going bad, and then we'll get into the intake and see if uh, things might look a little bit better. So stay tuned. So this time around we'll start with the schedule. You last saw as we were beat Birmingham 2-0. We followed that with a couple of draws against Bristol City and Peterborough. Blackburn gave us a, a right good hard in 4-0. Um, again, one of the better teams in the division, but um, still a bit upsetting. We did a bit of a, a change in the striker. Dunk wasn't playing particularly well, so we brought in Arnold Roll down as the, the main striker, and he scored. Um, so we kept him in there for a while. Got a draw again against Barnsley. We knocked MK Dons out of the FA Cup with a very narrow 1-0 win. Clifford getting the goal. Uh, again, another respectable draw with Burnley, who were right up the top of the table. Uh, Luton, we beat 2-0. So it looked like, again, we were on a really good bit of form in January. West Brom beat us 2-0. Again, that was one of the games that I actually thought we were going to have a, a chance in. Um, then, surprisingly, we beat Brentford 3-1. Jody Mandanda with two. And Spence with a goal. Put us 3-0 up. They got it back to 3-1, but we held on. Um, following that, we went on a bit of a losing streak. We lost to Plymouth, Millwall and Sunderland. Um, not scoring any and conceding nine goals uh, which very much reminds me of Everton at the minute um, not going particularly well um, then surprisingly we got a draw against Huddersfield and Tony Dunk hit a little bit of form again so we brought him back into the team he got two and Sodge got two and a thumping 4-0 win over Southampton at home we then followed up with a really good comeback and again very reminiscent of uh, Everton against Bournemouth Is we were 2-0 down going into the 90th minute and we got three goals so Tony Dunk rolled down and then Oza with a winner in the 97th minute um, brought me back some flashbacks um, which a bit of mixed emotions because we won the game but it really reminded me of Evans at the bottom of the Premier League um, which isn't a good memory uh, Millwall then put us out the FA Cup again I thought we would have had a chance in that game but they very quickly scored and we really couldn't get back into the game after that and then moving into March, we've had losses to Reading and Leicester, who are teams up near the top end of the table. And a 2-0 win against Sheffield Wednesday with another two goals for Dunk. So he's on a bit more goal-scoring form now, which, which is good and we needed it um, because the squad's been looking a little bit light in recent weeks, which leads nicely on to the squad. Um, a, big note, a big notice there is uh, Fredericks isn't there. We've let him go. So Fredericks is gone, leaving us with Ibrahim and Keyes as the the top two goalkeepers Ibrahim is the number one at the minute and Keyes with a higher potential threshold coming in is, is under study so again I'm not sure how many years it'll be before he takes up there's only three years in between them uh, Keyes has a, a, a bigger potential threshold so I expect them to be challenging probably when Keyes it's about 20 uh, Bruce Dad's back from loan at right back again he's going to slot in there as the understudy Again, he's quite good form when he's come back. He's played three games since he returned as well. So that's a much needed boost at right back. Uh, still struggling at left back. And as you can see, Louis Brathwaite, he's picked up an injury. Um, eight days to two weeks with a, a groin strain. But when you've only got one real left back back there, and he's hitting 28 years old now. So it shows you how long we've been making do with a, um, what we call him subpar. He's doing a job. Um, I just think it's an area we could massively improve in. Uh, but again, I think if we look at his, his reports, good League 2 player, unlikely to improve, not going to get any better. You can see there Montel Clifford's been put in there, and we have played him there a couple of games. Glenn Pierre's in there, um, but we really need to pick somebody else up who can take that on long term. Uh, to compound matters, Glenn Pierre is also injured. Again, just an understudy, but he's out for two to three months. Torn knee ligaments, so that's another one of them potential left backs out there. And Whereas we would normally do a bit of shuffling around at the back, um, it's a little bit of my own fault, but Callum Coleman's pick, picked up an injury, um, so we don't really have a right back at the minute. He's out with the club doctor for a little bit. But what I did do is is I loaned out um, on Yango because he wasn't playing particularly many games and I thought some first-team exposure would just tickle him up a little bit in the ability while I'm still giving games to... Brathwaite and um, Coleman but that's come back to bite me a huge number of players gone out on loan actually um, you can see Carl Peterson as well he's gone out on loan with an option to buy at the end for about 900,000 it's not a huge fee but I think when you take the loan fee into account as well we'll recoup some funding on them but again a number of players gone out to try and get them to realise some of that potential 
which is it just happened at the wrong time because them injuries to key positions at that time is all the fullbacks have just been wiped out and I'm, I'm running on a, a half injured Bruce Stad at right back Montel Clifford playing at left back and there is not a lot in the way of, of players behind there I think even when we start delving down into the under 21s lots of these are out on loan Tom Taylor's probably not ready Sangari another one who could play this out on loan so it's a bit of a struggle at the minute but we will persevere um, some other good players playing particularly well Mandanda again uh, we didn't get any offers for him in the summer so we've kept him and we've also managed to secure him on a longer term contract so we've got until 2045 as well which is is magnificent because um, he's going to stay long term and probably the last bit to really tickle you up, up to on, on the squad is Tom Houghton um, the young 18 year old midfielder he's not really made too much um, headway for his 16 non-competitive games um, but what I would say is within his reports he's got the first one really again recently to have the potentially Premier Division standard so I really need to find a way of getting him some game time at some point as well uh, just to see how he gets on in that attacking midfield role so I mean the squad's looking quite good we're still sat at the 25 players a fairly good spread like I said and I've said in recent windows um, it's that left back we need and uh, hopefully at the intake preview it said we were going to get a promising full back of some sort still hoping it's going to be left back but but we'll see uh, in terms of development center still got some players who are competing for first teamers finances still in the absolute gutter um oh, we've still got a seven million transfer budget not that we're going to spend it but we're creeping into the red again club vision wise we're doing all right um not as good as we have been in recent years in fact, is the transfers out in here boo, boo, boo. so you should have fredericks yeah 52 to 64k and kyle peterson 160k loan fee but i think there's a an option to buy at the end of that um pounds so again all right medical center wise really struggling this season for injuries staff wise we have made huge improvements so we're getting up towards the top end of the division in terms of what the staff we've got which which is really good and it bodes well for us in the future youth ratings not changed yet um training still going right dynamics is largely good because we've let the players go who want to go it's only really matt mulligan now um but i don't really want him to go as it currently stands because he's one of the kind of the four and halves we want to keep long term however should a bid come in for him we would maybe consider letting him go um, and that brings you pretty much up to date with everything we've persevered with the attacking midfielder again i'm not not fully convinced I, I think we might have been a little bit more stable with the deep line playmaker however points wise i think we're in a similar position so i'm going to stick with it a little bit longer i do alter who the attacking players are we do alter the mentality a little bit but largely we're quite settled in what we're doing i think the next thing really is to consider going back to wing backs which we had right near the start of the save just to give us a little bit more of attack and intent but yeah really not that bad uh, so what to look at now then is, is the youth intake and what we want i mean again screaming out for a left back i don't think there's anything i'm really crying out for outside of that because i think we've got quite a good spread of potential and current ability most players have that potential to get to championship but let's take a, uh, a look i've had a brief look it's in um three elite talents which is pretty good only four top talents and a lot of good slash decent talents which again i'm i'm going to dismiss because i don't see the point in investing too much time in them because uh, i don't think they're ever going to get anywhere near the first team so what we'll do like always we'll start at the bottom of the top talents we've got christopher O4, winger on the left hand side nigerian um tries to play way out of trouble and ambitious reasonable pace but his other stats are quite low um again we'll probably sign him up just to see how he gets on and gives a bit of depth within the under 21 and under 18 squads but again being a flat left winger maybe if we turn to a flat 4-4-2 in the future he might be useful so i'm not going to rule it out but my initial thought was he's not an advanced midfielder per se naturally and yeah i'm unsure i'm unsure on christopher Ruffle, but we will sign him up um, as we always do we take in the top talents next one we've got is the same position but in more natural in attacking midfield left is lewis nurse 
Uh, again, young Englishman with a very funky haircut. No traits, unambitious. Better set of mental stats. He can dribble as well, which is good. So actually, he probably sits slightly better as a as the advanced left winger. So I, I think he is a better player. I'd be interested to see what his potential threshold is. They're both the same. Um, but I think Lewis Nurse actually looks like the better player of the two. Uh, we've got a left back, and we're just doing nothing in the top talents, but we've got a left back, Zhang Chun, which is he's the best of the top talents in terms of potential. Um, although I would have expected he was, well, he's, he's English, so Zhang Chun gets forward when possible. So maybe if we go to wing backs, but good teamwork, work rate, stamina natural fitness so he's going to be able to get up and down the pitch but he's not blessed with anything technically which is my worry um, if we're going to want to make that transition towards the top end of the championship however um, I think he's probably long term going to be a lot better than Brathwaite and I think we're going to have to probably give him a little bit of exposure to the under 18 team before we throw him in too deep uh, but I, I think I very quickly see him catching up with Brathwaite so um, it's good to finally have a left back coming through uh, maybe the final piece of the puzzle is what we need. Uh, and Oh, we've got a right back as well. So Frank Bakuru, not quite the same threshold, not the same current ability and, and slightly lower potential, but fairly professional, gets forward when possible. So it's two wing backs. So I think maybe that is the transition. These two youngsters coming through as natural wing backs is the transition into wing backs within them areas. Um, maybe drop the wide midfielders a bit deeper and go 4-4-2 and get them overlapping um, natural wingers playing in the mid position but but we'll see um, good dribbling, good crossing so he's going to get stuff into the box as well I mean we could really use him he actually looks quite handy Frank, Frank Bakuru yeah he, I mean I think arguably he looks better than Zhang Chun because of the crossing and dribbling so when he gets forward he can actually do something with it so Zhang Chung is probably looking a little bit better in terms of fitness and natural physical abilities, but but there we go. Right, into the top talents then, the elite talents. Got Remy Lippmann, a left winger, which is it a position we really need. Determined, no traits. Pacey, which is good, not quite so good on the crossing and dribbling. Good acceleration. I mean, he's going to be quick, which I mean, we need a bit of pace. Um, be interesting to see how he competes on the left. We've got Buktas out there. I mean, who can we compare him with? Buktas is probably the natural one because he's the understudy at left wing at the minute. If I could find him, he must be away in the under 21s. So let's. Oh no, there he is. So he's not too far away. It looks like he's a little bit better aerial, so he's probably taller. Um, he's not too far behind of him as a, a starter, but he's only 19 against 15, although it's four years. So maybe Lippmann can can come up. Oh, have we got... I mean, there's a lot more hires on the Murat Bektas. Looks the much better player. The potential slightly better for Remy Lippmann. Could improve a lot. Potentially Skybet Championship. So I think, I mean, it's probably because Bectus is closer to being there. Uh, but yeah, Remy Lipton, quite an interesting player. I think he might be a good one for the future. Uh, next one, inside forward, attacking me for the right, but he's got a natural striker's position. So Patrick Pepper, good little bit of an alliterative name. Runs with the ball, tries to play way out of trouble. Light-hearted, really good physical starting attributes. 177 centimetres, so not quite six foot, but determination for finishing and first touch as well so is he I think he is more of an advanced forward yeah I mean that's where I'm going to train him for because I actually think and again let me know in the chat but I think he is more of a an advanced forward type there I think he's got some some pace about him which can be developed and his finishing first touch is quite good for a start for 10 so Patrick Pepper, maybe a, a pretender to the throne and possibly the best of the intake is Fehim Kutlu, the Turkish goalkeeper. And not a position that I would have thought we really need, uh, but he's already current two-star potential. For, I mean, that's... 
That just looks really good. Promising goalkeeper, resolute. Reflex is 14 to start. I mean, his positioning is good. Kick in one. Of, I mean, he's got it just about everywhere. It counts apart from concentration and command of area. But, I mean, he could be a really good goalkeeper. And, I mean, who could we compare? But Keys is probably the, the next best young upcoming. He's three years older than him. If we... I mean, that's close, isn't it? But the the gap there is much more significant. So I think Fahim Kutlu is a long-term keeper of the future. That's um, that's what I'm thinking. Again, I, th I think as an intake, that's that's pretty good. If we... What can I look at it? Squad. Let's go for the youth intake. Yeah, I mean, them top three, Pepper, Lippmann, Kutlu, quite interesting. Pepper, I think, is going to be an advance forward. Kutlu, a long-term goalkeeper. Lippmann, not sure if he'll force his, his way into the left-hand side because we're quite good on the left wing. Um, but again, we will we will sign him up and see where we go, but only really signing up from Bakuru up. So seven coming in. Uh, what does that mean for players going out? Let's have a look at who's coming up towards the end of the contract because that's how we normally do it by not many expiring soon. But I mean, Brathwaite's an interesting one. Do we let him go? Van der Hoevel, I mean, again, what's his report like? Yeah, decently one, so we'll probably let him go. Calder, I think we've got enough keepers to let him go. Douglas Deeth, yeah, League Two, so we'll let him go. Osman, he's going to go. And Callum Heron. Hmm. Do we let him go? One, two, three, four, five above him. What have we got? What have we got defence wise? Malik and McAvoy. I mean, he's an iffy one. I know we've got Lee Wilson coming through, so. So actually, I, I think we can let them go. So that's seven coming in, and what did I say? Six going out. So it balances off quite well, actually. Um, and that leaves us another another season to try and get some facilities done and try and get closer to the playoffs within the championship. So that's where we are. Uh, again, if anyone wants to look at anything in particular next time an episode rolls around, and I'm, I'm skimming over or missing things that you actually want to look at, just let me know in the comment section, and I'll tie into the next episode but i'm trying to keep it just fairly um, brief overview of where we are um, and what we're doing and uh, roughly where we are on the tables and how we're going to get a little bit better on uh, so that's the end of the episode hopefully you've enjoyed it i'll be back for the next episode hopefully not too far behind once the last six games are out for the end of season review and the summer transfer window as we set up for season 18 in the youth intake challenge so once again thanks for watching hopefully you're enjoying it i'm certainly enjoying the safe probably i mean how, why else would I have done 18 or 17 seasons? But um, I think this is one of the best ways to play the game. And again, I don't really miss making the transfers, if I'm honest. Uh, I quite like the surprise of what comes through the intake. But until next time, enjoy yourselves, enjoy saves, and enjoy the next England game. Take care.